I'm good, Alex. It's Friday, so it must be Tanya and Alex, Facebook Friday Live. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that's not planned. We did, Tanya and I did not rehearse that. Well, that's a genuine laugh from me. And it, <laughs> I'm anyway, glad I could make you so happy today on this Friday, Alex. You, you made me happy every day. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, thank you so much for every uh, for everyone coming to our IELTS Speaking Mock Exam group class today. Like I said, I'm Alex from Swoosh English, and we help people with IELTS and, and OET. But IELTS nurses who want to go to America, Tanya's from Kinetics, and she helps to place nurses in America. So we are a formidable partnership in helping people to achieve their American dream. So please introduce yourselves if you're watching on and, and inside our, our really intimate, engaged, interactive Zoom class, or you're watching on Facebook Live if you're in Lafora, which we have a, a fantastic relationship with uh, Luis and his admin team and all the thousands of nurses that follow us. And also, I should mention the IELTS benchmark exam competition that we have been running that has been hugely successful. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But please, yes, definitely introduce yourself because today is very exciting because we're going to do another speaking mock exam group class. We did this two weeks ago and we had some nurses volunteer to take part in our uh, in our mock exam for speaking. And our teacher, Alexander, gave some feedback and corrections and scores to tell these nurses how they can improve and we all asked you do you want a writing mock exam group class or a speaking mock exam group class a few days ago and the poll results were were uh, overwhelmingly in favor of speaking 70 30 but anyway tanya uh, can you introduce yourself if any nurses don't know who you are and how you can help them sure so my name is tanya friedman i'm the chief operating officer of kinetics uh, USA, and we are a recruitment direct hire specialist who work with hospitals, nursing homes, surgery centers, correctionals in all 50 states um, doing direct hire. But Alex, today is not about kinetics, it's not about swish, it's about our nurses. And as we said, we're very excited. We've seen that there has been a lot of interest in the mock exams. So that's why Alex and I have decided to do free classes going forward because we really want to help you. We know how big an obstacle the IELTS is. Um, it's something that really just hangs over your head because even if your case has been filed or if your case hasn't been filed, you have to pass the IELTS. There's no getting around it. it you know, it, it's there. It's this big mountain that everybody's got to climb. Very frustrating, very overwhelming, especially if you have a family and you're working and you know, trying to fit in study and, and it, you know, costs a lot of money. Um, so we really feel like the mock exams seem to be the thing that helps you the most. And that's why we, going forward, we'll be doing um, mock exam Facebook Lives every two weeks. So please tune in, share with your friends, um, share with your colleagues to make sure that everybody gets the benefit of these free IELTS classes. As Alex mentioned, we... Um, have been um, also, um, uh, you know, we, we have some winners that we had a competition um, for a free IELTS benchmark exam. Um, and thank you so much to Swish for putting this together because it's something that Alex and I've been talking about for a long time. We really wanted to cry, try and look for some kind of a tool that would help you to be able to know where you are. Because I think the hardest thing with the IELTS is it's very hard when you're on your own. It's kind of like you're on an island and you don't know. Am I doing right? Am I doing wrong? You know, if it, it, it's, it's might be expensive for a teacher. It's expensive to take the exam. It, it's difficult to fit in the time. So we wanted to have some kind of a tool that will give you some kind of a benchmark. Um, and what we've realized um, over the time we've been doing this is it's not just a benchmark of where you are in the IELTS um, you know, in the speaking, writing, et cetera, et cetera, but also for your confidence. So we decided that we were going to give just a few um, free benchmark test exams. But once the applications came in, I've got to say we were, first of all, overwhelmed. It was, you know, we realized how important this is to everybody and we really want to help. Um, so we decided to open it up for more people. Um, and um, right now, you know, 
obviously, you know, the, the winners have been have been picked randomly. And, and we welcome you to continue to apply. We will do our best. We really wish we could give it to everybody. And, and you know, we really want to help and we really want to make sure that you get the right tools to help you to get to climb this mountain. So keep the applications coming and we will do our best to help as many people as we can. And, and um, we will continue to have the Facebook Live mock exams. So with Absolutely. that said, over to Alex. Um, you know, just to mention as well, we've decided to do the Facebook Lives uh, an hour earlier. So for me, that means getting up in California an hour earlier. It's now six o'clock in the morning in, in, um, um, in California, but I am wide awake. We are excited to go. So I'll hand over to Alex and let the class begin. Thank you very much, Tanya. So I, as you've just uh, been mentioning that about the the free competition, well, it's a free competition that makes it redundant, but a, a competition for the IELTS benchmark exam, I've actually just put that again inside the chat. Milanis if, uh, from Kinetics, if you can also post that link to different people, because like Tanya says, the IELTS benchmark exam competition is still running right now. And we've had over 250 people apply, maybe more now actually, 250 people apply to be part of this competition. And we've got a lot of winners to announce, okay? So we've, uh, we've probably covered around about half of the people, but we've got to cover another half and, and announce more people. So it's not too late to join the competition if you wanna get access to the benchmark exam. And, and Tanya used a really good analogy about you're stuck on an island you're on an isolated island and one way you're trying to get uh, to safety and the other way the sharks and piranhas are all around every other exit. So the only exit for you to get to is safety. And what we want to do is, and, and from those results actually, around about 10% of the people who, who took, the, uh, took the application for the competition, 10% have taken the exam five times or more. Okay, that, might, that could be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. It could be a lot of times. Let us know how, in the chat box how many times you've taken it. But a lot of people have taken this various times. And the problem that they are, the mistake that they're making is they're going into the exam when they do not know their level. If you don't know your level, how do you know when you're ready to take the exam uh, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year? You don't know how long it's going to take you to prepare you don't know why you keep getting the wrong answers that you're getting on in the IELTS exam because they don't tell you which answers were correct and which, which answers were incorrect. So that's why this benchmark exam will tell you if you're at the beginning of the journey, how long it's going to take you to prepare with or without a teacher, because I know a lot of you are doing self-study, but some of you have teachers, um, but the majority are not are just doing self-study online. So that's why the benchmark exam will help a lot. And that's why it's been great to work with Lafora on this competition to offer as many nurses as possible this opportunity. And lastly, before I bring Alex, our extremely highly experienced UK IELTS teacher into the class, I do want to say if any of you are winners, and we've announced a lot of winners in the Lafora Facebook group, if you are one of those lucky winners, then please let us know in the chat box because we've had so many excited people saying that they can't wait to start the benchmark exam. So if you're watching on in the Zoom class or on Facebook Live, Please let us know. Let us know. Just say I am one of the winners, and I'm very excited. On I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, I'm very much looking forward to taking the exam, etc. Anyway, like Tanya says, it's not about uh, kinetics and swoosh today. It's about all of you watching right now, and this is what you've requested. You wanted a speaking mock exam. You wanted the practice, the corrections, the feedback, the scores. So we're going to give a few people the opportunity, a few brave people, a few people who are very confident to come into the class and take the exam. But if you don't put yourself forward, then you don't get the opportunity. So some, you really have to go for the opportunities when they become available to you. Uh, lastly, before we get started, is make sure you share this Facebook Live video today, step one. Okay, share it to your Facebook page. Step two, right underneath the video, okay, I have shared the IELTS Live class video. So I have shared the IELTS Live class video and you'll get all of our free video lessons and resources that are available to you in order to help your studies. So. Without further ado, I'm going to bring our teacher, Alexander. Uh, we'll probably make it a little less confusing by calling him Alexander and calling me Alex. So that oh, we don't yes. call both. We've got both double them. Alex today again. Double, double <laughs> Alex on a Friday. Alex uh, squared. <laughs> Alex squared, absolutely. Okay, let's see. 
uh, if I can bring Alex in here now. Alex, are you able to hear us, see us, etc.? Ah, see, Hello. and also, Tanya, I said before in our OET Facebook Live class that Alexander was putting me to shame by looking so professional. Uh, <laughs> but he then told me that it wasn't the reason he's wearing a blazer is because of the, how professionally how professional he wants to appear, but the fact it's freezing cold in the UK right now. Well, not, <laughs> not as cold as it is in the Midwest. No. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even want to speculate. Yeah, exactly. We, we think, I know there are a lot of people in the fora that are in the US already. So in if you're in the, the Midwest, please stay warm and stay safe. <laughs> they've, uh, they've been cancelling schools here, haven't they? School yeah. days. Is it? Yeah, is that's it, very, is, I mean, it's really scary. Oh, gosh. Mm. Well, anyway, with that, um, moving on from all the scary talk, let's get started <laughs> with the class today sure. because we've got a lot of people watching on Facebook. Uh, like I said as well, this cl these classes are completely free. So what we want you to do is to share the Facebook Live class to your page. And then after that, right underneath the video, I have shared the IELTS Live class video and we'll give you a free welcome pack with lots of free video lessons. But we want this to go out to as many people as possible so that you can help your friends and colleagues benefit from these sessions as well. Because a lot of people, nurses who want to get their American dream, they're not getting a seven in speaking. They're getting sixes, 6.5s, and they're taking them again and again and again. So please let us know in the chat box what scores you have got previously for your IELTS exam, okay? And we can do our best to help you today. So I'm going to pass the class over to Alex, and Alex, I will keep on I should say, Alexander, I'll keep on and uh, telling you about the questions people are asking on Facebook. Perfect. OK, well, um, it's great to be here again um, to join these guys and um, to focus on another IELTS speaking mock class. Um, I'm hoping that a few of you are going to get involved so that we can do this together and it will be a learning opportunity as well as an opportunity to, to get through some of those nerves because you have to do it in the exam room. So the more practice you get at doing this, the more confident you're going to feel. So <clears throat> I just wanted to start off um, by picking up on what we did a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, I looked at the different criteria involved in speaking and I detailed what the four criteria were that you had to score highly in, in order to do well in the exam. So um, if uh, any of you guys in the chat want to share uh, what you remember from that, if you were part of it, that would be great. Um, if you could uh, remind us of what those criteria are, because one of the things that I said was that in order to have a better idea in terms of how your speaking is going, it's important to know exactly what doing well in speaking actually means. So um, bear that in mind. Um, so in terms of the, the four criteria, is there anyone who, uh, who can remind us what they are? Anyone who uh, was uh, a part of this a couple of weeks ago who can, uh, who can share that knowledge? I hope so. Um, so I'm going to park that just for, for a second and, and I'll come back to it and I'll see if, if anyone can, can remind us. But um, I want to have a look at something a little bit um, different today as well in terms of providing a guide to the speaking. And what I want to have a look at is speaking part two. So speaking parts one and three are a little bit more straightforward in the sense that the examiner will ask you a question and then you will give a response. As we uh, remarked a couple of weeks ago, you want to expand on your responses, particularly in part three, because the, the questions in part three are designed for you uh, as a candidate to expand and to demonstrate your knowledge of English, whether it be sort of providing something more advanced in terms of grammar, something more advanced in terms of vocabulary. That's what part three is designed for. And also there are opportunities in part one to do that as well. But part two often causes problems for students because they dry up. You are offered an opportunity to speak for between one to two minutes. You should always prepare to speak for two minutes because that way you're prepared for everything. And um, in those uh, two minutes, the idea is, is that you demonstrate your knowledge of the, of the different criteria, that you um, express yourself in a way which is, which is fluent and that you use as much uh, variety in terms of your language as you can. Not necessarily in a conscious way, like right now I'm going to use this modal verb, now I'm going to use this conditional form, but it's just that you get to express naturally what it is that you're able to do in English. So if you dry up really quickly, 
within those two minutes after let's say 45 seconds or, or whatever, then you're not showing the full range of what you can produce. And that is a, a massive missed opportunity. So what I wanna share with you um, today is just an example of some of the things that you can come up with when it comes down to giving a response to speaking part two. So if I just share with you um, an example here, this is an example question from speaking part two. You get this task card, you will have of course a minute to prepare. So there's not a lot of information on the card. Um, describe something you own, which is very important to you. You've got sort of uh, three points here, and then you've got a rounding off point. So you've got four points. So what you could do is you could spend sort of 10 seconds thinking of a few ideas for each of those points. And then when it comes to speak, you're going to be able to produce about 40, 45 seconds of material. Then you dry up and then there's a big pause and the opportunity is being lost to demonstrate the full range of your fluency. So um, what I want to do is to share with you some, uh, the way that I would approach this task, some of the notes that I would make. So the notes that I'm going to share with you now are notes which I made in the space of under a minute. So it didn't take a, a long time. And with these notes, really, you would expect that you should be able to speak for at least two minutes. So here we are. So describe something that you bought recently. So you can see here, I've not written that much information, but it's what I can do with that information that is going to be useful for me. So I've got my main object here. I've got the laptop. Okay. And then I've written here, needed new one. So what I've done is, and if you were here two weeks ago, maybe you'll remember this. What I've done is I provided a context and the context begins in the past. Okay, so the past was, this is the, the build up to what I'm going to talk about here is that I needed a new laptop. Why did I need a new laptop? Well, because the old one was broken down, the keyboard didn't work anymore, maybe I'd had it for four years already, whatever. But just in having that bit of information, the fact that I needed a new one, I've given myself an extra topic that I can use to provide me with more content in my speaking. Okay, so that's what I've got here. Where did I get it from? Remember, that was what the speaking card was asking me for. It was uh, where I purchased it. So I purchased it in Peru. Now, actually, that's not true. Okay, I actually purchased it in a place called Curry's, which is about five miles away from here. But that doesn't give me a lot to talk about. So because I want to talk as much as possible, I've decided to put that I purchased it in Peru. And I've been to Peru. So I can say that I purchased it in Peru. Uh, it was a Christmas uh, gift from my girlfriend. Okay. Um, why? Again, it gives me things to talk about. And I went on holiday there. And whilst I was there, I saw this great laptop. It was uh, cheaper than the laptops that I'd seen in the UK. And I thought, oh, wouldn't this be a great memento of my time in Peru? Okay. So again, I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about this. I just wrote this down as the ideas came into my head. You can, of course, tell the truth. I didn't have to invent Peru. I could have said that I bought it in the UK and I got it from Curry's. That's fine. But the point is, you just want to make sure as you're making these notes, have I got the content here that I need to keep talking? You've got a minute to come up with content, just scribbling notes. Have I got enough content to keep going for two minutes? If you need to use your imagination in order to keep going, then use your imagination. It's just about being able to show off your English level. And you're not going to show off your English level if you're not speaking for those two minutes. So how long have I had it for? I've had it for two years. Okay, there's not a, a lot more to say about that. That's pretty straightforward. What do I use it for? I use it for Skype in order to keep in contact with friends. I use it for work in contexts such as this. I use it for entertainment. How do I entertain myself? I listen to music. What kind of music do I listen to? I can talk about that. I watch films. What sort of films do I like to watch? I can talk about that. The point is, is that with all of these notes, you want to have these little jumping off points so that you're never in a situation where you're like, um, um, yeah, you go silent. Don't go silent. You've got a whole minute here to think of these little jumping off points that you can use so that you never have to go silent. And that's how you want to be using that minute. And that's how you want to be using these notes. Okay. What do I use it for? So I use it for many things, you know, it earns me money. I've just got a few more details here. I can keep in contact with my partner. That's just a few more details just to provide context to what I wrote before. Um, and um, what do I, uh, why is it important to me? Well, I can say it's better than the previous laptops I've had. It's faster, it's easier to use. The technology is more up to date. Um, and so again, I've got my jumping off point here just by saying it's better, but in my mind, I've got the ideas as to why it's better. The notes are just giving me that jumping off point, and then I can use that 
in whichever direction I want to. And then finally, um, I've decided, as I was saying before, two weeks ago, just in case I need it, here is something I can use to now talk about the future. Remember, start with the past, what is the context, then move on to the main focus, and then if there's still time available that you need to fill, think about something to do with the future. And in this case, um, what I've talked about in relation to the future is, is that I hope I won't have to buy another laptop soon, because buying a laptop is expensive, and I hope I will hold this uh, laptop and have it in my possession for, for many years to come. So this is, this is the key um, that I want you to be thinking about for those of you who do get involved and you know, have the courage and, and really want to improve. And, and if you get involved in a, in a speaking mock today, is to use that minute. You're going to have a minute to just make some notes, to scribble some notes down, like you can see, what have I written here? Maybe sort of 40 words, something like, it's not a lot. Just scribble down some notes and make sure you have those jumping off points, your past, your sort of main focus, and then something for the future if you need it. And if I'm interrupting you because you've been speaking for two minutes, that is a very good sign. It means that you basically, you met that task in terms of producing language for those two minutes, and then you're giving yourself the best possible opportunity to express the, 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 the criteria and your level in those criteria um, so that you can get as high a score as possible in the exam. So that's one thing that I really want you to, to focus on as we do the mock exams today. Um, I've, I've noticed that no one in the chat has said what the four criteria are, by the way. Uh, so um, I'm still waiting for that. I don't know maybe if in uh, Facebook Live there are any students who have, uh, who have been able to come up with those criteria in, in that forum. Um, but it's important that you're aware of them because how are you going to be able to give your best performance if you're not even sure exactly what that performance is actually based on? So if you have remembered them, share them in the chat, or if you've already shared them with Alex, then um, good on you. So, um, yeah, I don't know um, if, if Alex, you're able to uh, let us know if, um, if anyone has, has come up with those. Um, if not, then, uh, then obviously I'll, uh, I'll do a, a quick reminder uh, in just a moment and um, and then we can we can get started with the the mock exams as well um, unless anyone has any any questions that they want to come up with before we we go into that hi Alex so I'm just hi. seeing the messages from people uh, Charles said I'm one of the winners of the IELTS benchmark exam competition I'm very excited about it that's great to hear Charles hopefully the the benchmark exam will help you to understand what level you're at and when you should book your examination. So we have, if you're on Facebook, you'll be able to see the link to in order to register for that. And um, please let us know in the chat box if you want to, um, if you want to actually take part in a mock exam today. I uh, let us know if you want to take part in that, uh, because we are giving you an amazing opportunity to practice your speaking, and then we can give feedback as well. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so I can see we've got one response here um, from uh, Miriala, I, I think. I hope I pronounced that at least close. Um, fluency, lexical um, resource, grammar, and tenses. Very close. Very close. Definitely the first three uh, are uh, part of those criteria. However, tenses... Is, uh, is essentially a part of grammar. So if you do well in your tenses, if you use your tenses correctly, that would go under your grammar score. So there's one other criterion to, uh, to be mentioned. Can anyone come up with it? Anyone want to have a, another guess? Fluency, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy. Okay. Okay. So um, no one else is, is coming up with it for now. So uh, I'll put you all out of your misery. The, the fourth criteria is, of course, it's pronunciation. So that's something to really focus on as well. <clears throat> um, and when it, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> when it comes to pronunciation, that is, of course, looking at individual words and the individual sounds within those words. But also it comes down to using things like intonation. So expressing... Um, surprise by raising your voice. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't expect that to happen. Or expressing um, disappointment when it's like, yeah, and then when my laptop broke, uh, I was really upset about that. So it's, you know, it comes down to intonation as well as coming down to how clear 
your articulation actually is of individual words and phrases. So that's that's a fourth criteria that you that you must make sure that you bear in mind as well. Um, so just as I'm just going to quickly refer you to it again um, for those of you who didn't really remember uh, too clearly in terms of uh, what the criteria were and how they uh, broke down. You can find this online. I'll, I'll share the, the link online with all the different uh, band descriptors. It's essentially uh, what we use. We use descriptors as examiners when we are making a decision as to how well a candidate has done in the exam. And um, by looking at those different descriptors, we can make a judgment in terms of, okay, I think fluency and coherence, they've done pretty well. I'll give them a seven. Lexical resource, yep, you know, they'll get a seven there. Gram grammatical range and accuracy, there might have been a few mistakes. So I'm going to give them between a six and a seven, a 6.5. And then pronunciation, you know, maybe you get a 6.5. And then overall, um, depending on what you get in each of those criterion, that's what your overall score is based on. So the more familiar you are with those, uh, uh, those criteria, the better you're going to do um, or at least the better you're going to have an opportunity to, to focus on improving when it comes to the actual exam. So I'll just share the, uh, the link right now on, uh, on the chat so, uh, so you can have a look at that after the class and, um, and get as familiar as possible with what it is that you need to be doing well when it comes to the, the speaking exam. Um, so um, are, we, are we ready to get started to do some, some mock exams? I think we are, Alex. We're definitely ready to get started. I want awesome. to have as many people volunteering as possible to do a speaking mock exam with you, Alexander, because it's such a great opportunity, like I said, okay, like I said before, about getting that practice and then getting the feedback and the scores. One thing I will say for anyone who's watching in Lafora right now, please let us know in the chat box, okay? Just say I am a Lafora member because this group, this Lafora group that we are sharing the, the live class video too. It's a fantastic community of nurses who are all motivated, trying to push each other along and motivate each other to pass the exam. So these speaking mock exam group classes are a really good opportunity for you to get involved. So make sure you register. We put the link inside the chat box so you can come inside this Zoom class with Alexander and I and all these other students, and then you're able to practice your speaking. Okay, so please let us know in the chat box if you like to if you'd like to take a speaking mock exam okay and, and we will see who we can select to do that okay make sure your internet is 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 good etc uh, and we can get that going for you fantastic let me see we've got one person on the chat we've got a couple okay, okay we've got a couple okay. coming up let me just uh let's see who we've got uh, okay See we've got. Okay, so let's see who we can choose. Okay, who would like to? I think we've got Kirthi Krishna. Okay, great. Krishna. Let's see if I can bring Kirthi in. Okay, so if you, like I said before, if you're on Facebook and you're on the fora and you'd love to get involved and you'd love to have a speaking mock exam with Alexander, then I would love for you to come in and register and join us inside the class. And like I said, we can do that practice with you. Let's see if we can get Keith in here. Okay. okay. Keith, I'm going to unmute you. Are you there, Keith? Uh, yes, I am here. Hi, Keith. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Very good, very good. When's your IELTS exam? Um, it's uh, due uh, this uh, 9th of February. 9th of February, okay. And how are you feeling about it? A uh, little tense. A little tense. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's, very, that's very normal. And I think this kind of practice today will help you a lot. So I'm going to hand you over to Alexander and he will conduct the speaking mock exam with you. How are you feeling about it? Mm, I'm looking forward to, I mean, for, I was looking for, uh, for the mock exams. Then um, I, I, I got this email, then I thought like, let's sign up for it. And then yeah. I did it. 
So I'm feeling happy about it. Good. Okay. Well, this is your opportunity, Kirthi. So good luck. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Hi there, Kirthi. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Hi. So um, we're, we're going to get started then with the, the mock exam. Um, as I'm sure you're aware in your, in your preparations, there are three parts to the exam. Um, the first yes. part... Good, you're aware of that, perfect. So the first part will be uh, question and answer, um, and then we'll move on to the second part, which will be the, the long term, which I'll explain okay. once we get to. And then we'll also do part three, which will be uh, another question and answer section as well. Um, okay. Okay, so you ready to get started? Yeah, sure. Perfect, okay then. Um, so first of all then, Kirthi, um, can you tell me, are you a student or are you currently working? Basically, I'm a doctor from India looking forward to work in UK. So I'm waiting for my GMC registration. And uh, in that regards, I need to give my IELTS. Okay. So I can say I'm a student. <laughs> okay. And how long have you been studying English? Uh, it's been more than nine years. Like I can say that uh, it's uh, one of my subject from school time. So about, I can say about 12 years, I can say. And do many people in your town speak English? Yes, uh, like nowadays uh, English is a common language everywhere. So in that regards, everyone can communicate in English, but not so fluently like the native speakers. Okay. I want to ask you some questions about the weather in your town. Um, so, have you ever been in very cold weather? Uh, presently, I'm residing in UK, London. So, it's been very <laughs> chilly today. I mean, uh, the temperature is going to minus. And uh, around this week, it's going to be much freezing, I guess. Okay. And how often is the weather cold where you're from? Um, Hyderabad is the city which, where I'm from, south of uh, India. There, the temperature is uh, temperate, sorry, uh, with the summers being hot and winters being cool. Very nice weather, I can say, to live in. Okay. Are some parts of your country colder than others? In my country, yes. Uh, the north of India... Are, uh, is, much is much cooler when compared to other areas like ours. Um, it's because of uh, the climatic, uh, the geographical uh, distribution maybe. Okay. Would you prefer to live in a hot place or a cold place? I think uh, mm, it's better to live in a cool place because, um, because that um, whenever we want to do something, we can do it. But if we live in hot place, it just tires us. It's very tiring to live in a hot place. So I prefer cool. Okay. And um, final question. Would you say that your town is a good place to live? Indeed, yes. Uh, it's a very good place because of climatic uh, variations uh, and the temperate uh, type of climate with summer being hot and winters being cool and very good place to live in. Okay, thank you very much. So now we're going to move on to the next part of the speaking test. Um, you will have to talk about a topic for between one to two minutes. You will also have a minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. So let me just share the topic with you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Can you see my screen there, um, Kirthi? Yes, I can see. Perfect. Okay. So um, looking at the card just here, you've got one minute to prepare your response. Okay.
Okay, Kirti. Um, so I'd like you to describe a, a competition that you took part in. Okay. Um, it happened in during my school. Uh, sorry, <clears throat> it happened during my college days that uh, uh, there was inter school uh, inter uh, college competition that was going around. So I, it uh, happened randomly that my friend suggested me to take part along with her. So because uh, it was indeed a, a caroms competition. So uh, caroms is was one of my favorite uh, uh, game which I used to play indoor. Uh, so my friend insisted me to take part. So I took it, uh, there was no preparation as such. So what happened uh, for, during the game is that I just uh, uh, played well and uh, we were selected through the series. Uh, I clear, we clear, me, it was in a pair actually. So we, uh, we cleared the first, first round and then we were into the second round. And uh, I played that amazingly, and uh, we were soon we selected into semi-finals. Uh, so we were playing well, but unfortunately we couldn't get through the prize, which was a trophy. But instead, we ended up with a certificate, and it was very nice because um, it was uh, the recognition that we got that we can uh, play well. And especially me, because uh, people got to me, uh, got to know me that I can play the uh, exam. I mean, like I can play the um, caroms well. So it was indeed a very happy moment for me. I was very elated that time. Uh, apart from the academics, it's better if we can get through any other sports. So competition sometimes bring out that spirit in us and helps us to know our own uh, potentiality. So indeed, it was very good feeling altogether. Would you like to take a part in a competition like this in the future? Yeah, definitely, uh, uh, because um, it's something to show your own potential, so to hone your skills. So I would definitely uh, look forward to play again. OK, thank you. OK. So um, you were, we were talking before about a competition which you took part in. Okay. I'd like, yeah, I'd like to ask you um, a question. What do you think is the value of taking part in competitions in school? I think it lays a foundation uh, for the students to know the um, to know the spirit of competition. Like it, um, it will help students to understand what's the competition about and uh, to hone your skills uh, in that particular field, apart from the academics. If you think about, uh, I mean, about the curricular activities, then it's also try, uh, gets them in that focus as well. Do you think it's a good thing to give prizes to children who do well at school? Yes, uh, I, yes, definitely, because it's kind of rewarding them with the gifts uh, for which they will uh, feel more enthusiasm, enthusiasm uh, to play again and again. So I think gifts are the best uh, way to show to children. Would you say that schools for young children have become more or less competitive since you were that age? Uh, definitely yes, because uh, in this fast pace of world where uh, I mean, like there's rapid uh, competitive spirit going up, uh, more and more colleges are coming up with uh, more competitions and uh, making or persuading young students to come and uh, uh, involve in it. So they are making more competitions these days when compared to the olden days. Do you think this is a good thing? Um, if, yes, I feel it is uh, good uh, to a certain extent, but it shouldn't be to uh, more. It shouldn't cross limits where children uh, are outweighing their academics and they're getting into more of competitions. What are the advantages and disadvantages of intensive training for young sports people? Um, th there are mostly 
uh, many advantages. Uh, uh, it's re it brings respects to the country. It uh, gets them identification. It can uh, to show their real talent and uh, to uh, basically earn respect for the country as well. The other side of it is uh, the downside, especially is the health. Maybe like they they won't be able to uh, get through their academics well, and uh, maybe their health issues. Um, and uh, sometimes they end up uh, with the negative result, which could be uh, upsetting to them, and they might be uh, they might not be confident next time. So altogether, um, sports are or competitions are good to get positivity in you, provided if they bring confidence in you. That's what I feel. Do you think that it's possible to become too competitive in sport? Yes, uh, th it it happens quite often be, uh, to get people uh, uh, more competitive. That's why the spirit is about the sporting spirit. Uh, but one should uh, play with mind. I mean, they should not be uh, hurrying up for a game or competitively doing it. One should put his uh, put their mind into it and try to achieve what is needed. Have a focus and try to achieve it. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Kirthi. Uh, that is the end of the test. <coughs> so Kirthi, um, well done. That was very good. How do you feel? <laughs> that was uh, better, I think. Better than you've done previously? Yeah, maybe. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. So you feel positive about it, Kathy? Mm, yes, uh, I feel good about it. Maybe I've, I've, I mean, maybe I'm up to seven. I think. I'm not really um, sure. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I thought you did a very, very good job. I have to say, um, in terms of the fluency side of things, you one question that I never had to ask throughout the entire exam was why because you kept telling me why. You kept explaining your reasoning. <clears throat> Sorry, you kept adding context to your answers. Um, you looked at, particularly in part three, you looked at both sides of the answers. And then even in some cases, you were sort of summing them up. You know, I remember at one point you're saying, so, you know, all together, I think it can be a good thing on this side. You know, so you, you were using sort of lots of vocabulary, lots of fluency um, in, your, in your speaking. So I think in those areas, in terms of the area of uh, fluency, I would definitely say that you're that you're hitting um, that target in terms of uh, of a seven. I don't think there's there's any uh, doubt about that. Um, okay. And yeah, and I think also um, grammatically, generally speaking, you were very accurate as well. Um, you were using lots of different phrases. You're using um, comparative forms right from the okay. beginning, and mm -hmm. uh, so that sort of variety is important in terms of scoring highly in the grammar. I think the okay. The only um, errors that I noticed, there were sometimes missed articles um, at, at stages. Um, so there were sometimes where um, I think you said, yeah, if we live in hot place. So if we live in a hot place, you'd, you'd want to use the, uh, the indefinite article uh, in that case. Um, okay. And so, yeah, that, that was the only sort of grammar error that I was noticing that, that was coming up. I don't know if Alex would have noticed any, anything else coming up there. But, um, but yeah, apart from that, really, really accurate. And then with pronunciation as well, um, your pronunciation was, was strong. It was clear. Um, and, you know, you were using longer words as well. In some of the longer words that you used, sometimes the stress was just slightly incorrectly placed. So I think at one point you were saying um, competitive rather than competitive, which, uh, okay. so you, yeah, so you'd want to get the stress on the second syllable there. And, and you, at one point you're talking about academics, where it, whereas it's academics. So um, okay. the third syllable there. So just in some of the longer words, there was just um, some errors in terms of the stress. But um, yeah, generally speaking, there, there weren't any issues at all. Um, yeah, I, I would think overall in terms of that performance there, you would be looking at getting um, a seven or possibly even a, a 7.5 overall, I, I would have thought. Um, Alex, wow, that? yeah. that's fantastic, okay. Kirthi. So uh, it's great. And also I will say as well, that your confidence was very, very obvious. I mean, that, that shone out. And the fact that, you know, you were at the end, you said, yep, yeah, I think that's a, a seven. So I liked, I liked your certainty <laughs> as well. I mean, because some students, some some students we have 
we have in our classes, they, you know, they, they lack confidence or they're not so sure about their performance, but well, you, 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 you thought you did well. And, and, and quite rightly, Alex said you did do well. So, so well done. And I think this has given you, you know, you've got your exam in a couple of weeks time. So just keep on practice. Oh, I say maybe next week, sorry. So you've got your, yes. your exam next week. So keep, keep working hard with your study partner and I'm sure you'll get the, the results that you deserve. So well done. And I will say that this is harder doing it in front of other people than what it will be in the real exam because you'll just be doing it with one examiner. So well done. Thanks, Alex. Thank you so much. Yeah. Very, very welcome. Yeah, you're very okay. welcome. Yeah, so um, well done. Okay. And uh, and yeah, we'll keep on supporting you. Yeah, sure. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. So yeah. what it's really important now, everyone, is uh, after listening to Keithy's speaking mock exam and the feedback that Alex provided, what have you learned from like like I said from the exam and the feedback that Alex uh, that Alex has provided to Kirthi, what did you learn that will help your own speaking performance? Please let us know in the chat box if you're on Zoom, and then on Facebook if you're watching on Facebook or you're in Lafora or our Swedish English page, let us know and type your comments in the message box and we will read them out because it's really important that you tell us what you learned otherwise you're just coming to these classes and you're just watching but you're not learning anything yeah so it's good to analyze i think are we i think we might be next uh, ready for the next person alex perfect I'll, I'll just make one quick um comment in terms of that um so for those who are paying close attention they would have noticed that i asked um Keithy an extra question in part two and um the reason i did that is because she was doing a really good job but I wanted to really push her to get to those two minutes. And, you know, she was at round about sort of 145. So one thing she could have done, and the question that I asked was about, again, it was about the future. You know, would you like to do something like this again in the future? So do remember, if you're coming towards those two minutes and you just, you can't think of anything else to say, that is an extra area that you can go into. Would you want to do something like this again? What are your plans for the future? How do you think this will affect you in the future? Just to give you that extra bit of content so you can get up to those two minutes and then you thank know you. that you've done what you need to do. Okay, thank you, Alex. No, yeah, no we'll worries. consider on that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Sure. Nice talking to you. Thanks. And you too. Take care. Great stuff, yeah, Kathy. Bye. Okay, so all the people we've got here, we've got uh, Angela, we've got Charles, we've got Chin, Dana, Harleen, Ivy, Jamila, uh, uh, Josel, Mercenario, we've got Leilani, we've got May, Maria, Marivi, uh, we've got, yeah, lots of people. So please let us know if you want to do the, be the next person who wants to do a speaking mock exam. I believe we do have, uh, I believe we have, who do we have? We have Angela who would like to do one. So Angela, let's bring her in. Angela, are you there? Let's see if we can get her in. Okay. Angela, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Hi, hi, Angela. How are you? I'm I'm doing great. Good, good. Which country are you living in? I'm uh, originally I'm from the Philippines, but right now I'm uh, working here in Saudi Arabia. Fantastic. How many times have you taken the IELTS exam, or have you not taken it before? I've taken uh, four times, I think. Four times? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. And how, how have you prepared previously? Uh, I just do uh, um, study in, by YouTube and uh, other online like that. Okay, so all free self-study? Well, uh, come again? Is it, so have you ever had a teacher help you before? Uh, before, yes. Uh, last time I attended a review center in okay. Manila. Okay, okay, okay. And and so today, uh, have you ever had a native English speaking IELTS teacher give you corrections before on your speaking, writing, etc.? No. Well, today is your lucky day, Angela, because you're going to get Alexander giving you feedback. Okay, you. and he's Thank going you. to tell you what score you're at where you can improve just the, the same way that we did with Kathy. Before we get started, what did you learn from Kathy's speaking? I think I need to speak spontaneously so that I can, and I have to think uh, right away so that I can answer the question uh, correctly. 
Okay, okay, good. So as long as you're analysing other people speaking, it's really important. Are you are you in the Lafora group? Yes, I am. Okay, good, good, good. Did you take part in our free IELTS benchmark exam competition? Yeah, I did, but uh, unfortunately, I did not. I I haven't picked up. Well, don't worry because we're still announcing the winners. Okay, so it's not over yet. We will be announcing more over the next couple of days. So fingers crossed, you can get that benchmark exam. All <laughs> okay. right. So Angela, I'm going to pass you over to Alexander now, and the best of luck to you. Okay. 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 Um, hello, Angela. Hello. Hi. Um, so we're we're going to get started then um, from uh, part one, and obviously we're going to go through the whole exam. Are you ready to get going? Mm. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sure you are. So um, to start with, could you tell me, um, Angela, um, where are you? Where do you live? Do you live in a town or a village? I live in a town right now. I, actually, it's a city. Uh, in, uh, originally, I'm from the Philippines, but right now I'm working here in Saudi Arabia, and I'm working in Al Karj. It's about. Uh, uh, one and a half hour from Riyadh, which is the capital of the Saudi Arabia. It's just a small town, but it's uh, it's complete. Uh, you have access to a uh, department store, the hospital, and also in the, uh, school, your university. What's the most interesting part of your town? Uh, I think there is a one specific uh Tower. It's a water tower, which is very prominent here in uh, in this town. Uh, you can see the, uh, this uh, monument here in Al Karj. What kind of jobs do the people in your town do? Uh, I think uh, they, are, they are well known for farming. There are lots of uh, farm here in uh, Al Karj. Uh, they are raise, uh, growing dates uh, here in uh, Al Karj. Would you say it's a good place to live? Uh, I think so. It's a good place because it's, uh, it's very accessible to different uh, establishments like shopping mall, uh, hospital, and also a school. And it's very near to, to the main capital, which is uh, Riyadh. Let's talk about accommodation. Tell me about the kind of accommodation you live in. Uh, right now, I'm working. Uh, I'm living in a in the company accommodation. So they provided uh, all the uh, utilities and also the amenities. Uh, we have free free. Uh, electricity, water, and also the electric, uh, electric appliances are provided by the hospital. And uh, it's, it's a one building and we live in one flat. Uh, every one flat, there is six uh, uh, employees living there. Uh, what do you like about living there? Uh, it's uh, complete amenities, and I, I don't have to pay for the, for the rent, and uh, they provided us uh, with the, all the amenities, and also we have also a gym uh, in the ground floor, so we don't have any problem with it. And it's very close to, to store, so every now and then we can... Uh, run to the, the store if we, we we need anything. What sort of accommodation would you most like to live in? Uh, I think uh, I would like a house uh, with a large uh, yard uh, where you can plant uh, trees and it's very uh, refreshing and also it's also I want it uh, a home that it's very near to the hospital, just in case you get sick, uh, you can, anytime you can go to the hospital or you can go to, it's very accessible. And uh, it has a 24 hours uh, um, transportation. Okay, thank you very much. So for the next part of the test, 
I'm going to show you a card with some information. Thank you. Okay, so you will have one minute to prepare what you are going to say. You may make notes if you wish. You'll be expected to speak on the topic on the card for between one to two minutes. Okay. Okay. So, oh, sorry, I keep bringing up the wrong thing. I cannot see it. So I'm just gonna bring it up now. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we are. Um, so here is the card just here, and you've got one minute to prepare your response. Okay. Can you can you see that clearly, Angela? Uh, yes. Yeah, perfect. Okay, one minute from now. Okay, Angela. So, could you describe a piece of electronic equipment that you find useful? Uh, I will talk about a, a very essential uh, electronic equipment that I have. Uh, I have a laptop. It's a 16 centimeter, I think, uh, in size, and it's, it has a uh, five. Uh, Intel Core 5, uh, and it, it has a memory of one terabyte. And uh, I have learned this, uh, uh, this laptop is very useful to me, and it has been given by my friend uh, five years ago as a, um, as a gift. And uh, it's very uh, accessible, and I can use it as to communicate with my uh, family and friends because I'm very far away from them. So every day I use it to communicate with them by Skype or by Facebook Messenger. Uh, and also I use it for entertainment uh, because I I love uh, listening to music, uh, all types of genre like uh, pop and jazz like that. And I can also watch uh, TV or movies or news or online and I I can uh, use it uh, for if I want to uh, learn something I just uh, type it in Google and, I, and instantly or in YouTube instantly I can learn how to cook or uh, just essential things that uh, I wanted to learn uh, or I want right now I'm because I'm reviewing for IELTS. I uh, every day I use it uh, so that I can know uh, what are the essential things to know uh, in learning about uh, IELTS. Thank you very much. Okay. Um. So tell me, um, Angela, what kinds of machine are used for housework in modern homes in your country? Hello, Angela. Presentation. 
Sorry, um, I, you went a bit silent there. Sorry, could you just um, give me the answer to that question again? Could you tell me what kinds of machine are used for housework in modern homes in your country? What, what, come again, sir? Yeah, what kinds of machine are used for housework in modern homes in your country? Uh, I think it's very essential to have the mic, uh, microwave oven or also uh, rice cooker because Filipinos are very uh, fond of eating uh, rice. Okay. How have these machines benefited people? Yes, it's, it, uh, it has improved the way of life of people because uh, people now are very busy. So just using this uh, microwave oven, it, it lessened the, the time they have to, to deal with cooking. So they can uh, do other tasks other than cooking. Are there any negative effects of using them? Uh, I think if it's uh, exposure to radiation uh, will 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 not benefit with the health of the of the people. Like uh, I think there is some cases that uh, overexposure to microwave or oven use will will get some cancer like that. Do you think all new homes will be equipped with household machines in the future? Yes, because right now uh, uh, the, there has been a trend that uh, people are getting busy at work and they wanted to to lessen the work they have at home and uh, give it to or uh, to leave it to to the machine uh, to do the work and do some other things. What kinds of equipment do most workers need to use in offices today? Um, computer, laptops are very essential, I think, because it helps with, uh, with the work you are doing, like you do some uh, presentation or you do some report about uh, some some of the things you have done in, in your workplace. How have developments in technology affected employment in your country? Uh, it's not that uh, they have, uh, because right now in the Philippines, uh, it's very uh, progressive and they are more in trends of this uh, electronics uh, uh, for example, uh, in doing in the factory, in doing some some clothes, uh, it has uh, given them more beneficial uh, things. Some people think that technology has brought more stress than benefits to employed people nowadays. Would you agree or disagree? Uh, I think no. It has given the people more advantage because. It helps them uh, to do that uh, to do their work uh, much easier. In what way? Uh, for example, if uh, during the older times we used the typewriter, and it's very for, uh, for just typing a one uh, uh, one book, it will take time. But right now, because we have this uh, modern technology like the uh, laptop, you can easily uh, do the one book and you can save it and then you can just reprint it. Okay. Thank you very much, Angela. That is the end of the much. test. Thank you so much. Okay. How do you, how do you feel? I'm quite nervous because it's been a long time. I haven't had the IELTS exam. Okay. I well done, Angela. Do well. well done. You didn't. You didn't sound nervous to me. What do you think, Alex? No. Um. I thought that you sounded very much in control, and you did sound confident. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I. I didn't get a sense of of nerves. So you. Yeah. You controlled it well. Thank you.
Absolutely. I think, um, yeah, in terms of sort of uh, generally speaking as well, you part two, I'm going to focus on that because that's what I focused on at the beginning. Well done. You spoke for the entire two minutes. I didn't have to add anything. I didn't have to, to prompt you. So um, you're obviously listening carefully to what we were talking about in terms mm -hmm. of expanding, expanding, developing, and, uh, mm -hmm. and you showed um, that you were very well able to manage that. So uh, mm -hmm. extra congratulations there for, mm -hmm. um, for, for being able to do that. Um, it, it, it was good. I mean, um, in terms of your use of vocabulary, you came up with some uh, less common phrases. You talked about uh, you know, things being a trend. You talked about the fact that Filipinos are very fond of, um, I think you were saying rice and things like this. So, so you're using expressions that were less common. And in terms of your vocabulary score, that is going to do, uh, that's going to increase your score because that's what the examiner wants to, to hear. Um, I think, yeah, also you were talking about the fact that, um, uh, you know, you were talking about the water tower. You said it was very prominent. You were expanding on your answers in most cases. Just at the end, I asked you to expand a little bit more on the final question, but in most cases, mm -hmm. you were expanding without me needing to, to prompt you and, and demonstrating that you had the vocabulary in order to do, in order to do that. There were some words which you were repeating a little bit. So I think, you know, accessible was a word that you were using quite a lot. Um, so maybe sort of think about how you could use a synonym or how you could paraphrase that. So in terms of, you know, you, uh, about making things accessible, you could say, you know, it provides more access or, it, it, you know, it makes something easier to do or, you know, it increases, it increases the ease of doing something. Just, just so you can paraphrase a little bit so that you're not using the same words too often. Because again, variety of vocabulary is going to see you score more highly. Okay. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, but it was it was uh, it was a good it was a good um, effort. And the, just the final thing I would say um, as a as a as a sort of pointer, there were some moments of, of hesitation as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you can, yeah, and, and you know, again, you're thinking about what to say, and that's natural. But the more you can sort of reduce that down, the higher you're going to score in terms of fluency. So I mean, if we if we are looking at scores at the moment, I, I would say almost a seven, but I'd say probably just 6.5, just because of some of the times that, hesit that hesitation, which would have meant that it would be, it would be tough to give you a, a seven for the fluency there, which, mm -hmm. which maybe would have taken you to 6.5 potentially. Okay. Um, Angela, how do you feel about that? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, 6.5, so, but there's definitely room for improvement. And I, I think if you get a lot more practice and also get feedback and corrections from a from a teacher who's helped a lot of students to pass, then I'm sure you can get that seven. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with Alex. I did hear the word accessible a lot. So it's just about varying your language because vocabulary is really important. You know, you're getting 25% of your score from vocabulary. The other thing I would say is, um, I think you said something like, because it will make work easier. And then Alex is almost like going, and? you know continue speaking but then you and then he had to ask you the question so don't you know think about how you can be more detailed in your in your answers i think that's really important to uh, to have that in mind okay so because a lot of a lot of people you have to then ask them that those extra prompt questions for them to continue to continue speaking but it's your responsibility really to to extend it as much as possible yes thank you you're very welcome angela was that helpful yeah, it is helpful, sir. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that was helpful to you. Just keep practicing, getting feedback, and I'm sure you'll get the seven in speaking. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome, Angela. Okay, so thank you to Angela and Kirti today who have been taking part in our mock exams. I really appreciate your your confidence in order to in order to do that. So we're now going to stick around for questions. OK, and if you've got any questions for Alexander or myself, then please put them in the message box on Facebook Live or on Zoom. OK, we're more than happy to help you as much as possible. Um, please let us know what you learned from today's class. OK, let's see what we've got on Facebook Live. Uh, OK, I'm just going to mute you, Angela. OK, so, yeah, please let us know what did you learn from today's session? Let's see what, what questions and, and whatnot we've got inside in, in on the forum. Uh, we've got a lot of people watching. Make sure you share today's IELTS Live class video. Share it to your Facebook page. And then afterwards, you can write underneath the video, I have shared the IELTS Live class video. I have shared the IELTS Live class video. 
and you will get access to our free Alice Welcome Pack with lots of video lessons and resources. So I think there's no, there, there are no questions. What I will say is if anyone wants to get take part in the competition, the swooshenglish.com forward slash Lafora is the link for the competition. I'm going to put it on our uh, on our Zoom chat. So if you're inside the Lafora group or you're a kinetics nurse and you want to access our free IELTS benchmark exam uh, in order to get that competition, in order to win one of the one of those places on the competition, all you need to do is go to that link that I've put on Zoom and I'll put it on Facebook Live as well. So it's www.swooshenglish.com okay, forward slash Lafora. And you will then be able to answer just a few questions, probably take you a few minutes or so, and then you'll be able to access the uh, information to how you can enter the competition. So that's pretty much everything, okay? I will just quickly share that screen with you to show you uh, one sec what that looks like. So once you go through to the page, uh, let's see if we've got it here. Okay. Uh, see if I can bring up the page to show you what that looks like. Okay. So if I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. So when you come through to swooshingwithcom forward slash Lafora, and then you can see here some information about the fact it's provided by Kinetics and Swoosh, and we'll be doing this every month. All you do is click join here, click this button, and then you'll go through to answering the questions. So that's pretty much it from Tanya uh, from Kinetics and um, myself from Swoosh English. Tanya, are you there? I'm here, Alex. Hi, I've Tanya. Riveted this morning. We had a really good session. You Thank have. you, Kirti and, and Angela, for um, for being brave. Um, it kind of makes me think of the um, the quote from Theodore Roosevelt, who I can't remember the exact quote, but it's basically about like stepping into the re arena and living daringly, um, and that's the only way to really proceed. So well done to Kirti and Angela. And I know that how nerve wracking it is in front of so many people. Um, to do a mock exam, but hopefully that was helpful and hopefully the rest of you could benefit by watching. Um, and I think really it comes down to the practice and the confidence um, and just remembering also what something that Alexander said about um, maybe taping yourself, um, because I think that really can be a helpful tool, mm -hmm. you know, to get to that two minute mark and, and make sure that you're covering all aspects before you, um, you know, kind of switch off and, and, and you don't have enough um, fluency going. Mm. So um, some really good pointers and tips. Thank you so much to Alex Squared for this morning. Um, and as Alex said, um, you know, the, the competition is still open. And please note, this is not about kinetics. So it's not just for kinetics nurses. We've opened that up for everybody. Um, and we'd love to help as many of you as possible. Thanks again to Louise and the, the Fora admin team for allowing so many people to share in this free information um, to help you to, to achieve your goal. Fantastic, thank you very much, Tanya. I will say one of your kinetics nurses, Tanya, Josel Mercenario, I learned today that I need to know, I need, I need to learn more synonyms and enhance my vocabulary so that I can avoid repetition uh, of, you know, of using the same words. Absolutely, Josel, yeah. Like we said before with uh, with Angela about not using the same word accessible every time, trying to vary your language. And that's where I think just picking up even those small little pointers and tips can be really, really helpful. If anybody um, also would like a study partner, because I think that's where at least if you have a study partner, they can you, you can help each other to point out those you know small things that make a big difference, like using the same word too many times. Um, please join the IELTS, the, the Kinetics uh, Swoosh IELTS free IELTS support group. Um, and Milanus will set you up with a study partner who can help you to practice and make sure that you achieve your American dream. Exactly. Thank you very much, Tanya. Thanks for everyone Thank coming you. along today on, on Zoom and on Facebook. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next